Football for the Sooners has been highlighted with the addition of three new faces to the coaching staff and the first quarterback battle at Oklahoma since 2007. It's a beautiful day here in Norman outside of Memorial Stadium on the campus of the University of Oklahoma as we get you set for kickoff in the 2013 Oklahoma football spring game. always know he's going to win. You always know he's going to be open. And for the most part, he catches the ball very well. Yeah, he wanted to catch it to get, a, get Blake a good start. But here he is with a nice completion right now. That's what I want to see as a quarterback coach. Can they do that? That'll help me game plan and know what to do in the future this fall. You see how evasive Jalen Saunders can be all the way out to the 49 with a pickup of 13 yards. This is second down and eight play from the defense's 49-yard line. We'll go over the way the scoring works is Bell keeps it himself. That is what Sooner fans are accustomed to seeing, and they're not going to hit him. They will mark him down at the 44-yard line. It's a gain of five. He's furious with Josh Heupel right now. That's dirty pool. <laughs> Third down opportunity. They fake the sweep there to Sterling Shepard, and the give goes right up the middle. Breaking out of the pack. I think there was a loose ball in there, and headed toward the end zone for a touchdown is LeColton Bester. 44 yards on the play, and the offense has a 6-0 lead. Let's get another look at it. Ball definitely came out, and I didn't think like, I didn't think that the forward momentum had stopped for the running back. I think Chuka Ndunuwe maybe got his hand in there and kind of gummed up the play. Yeah, that's when the ball comes sure out. You do, and he, he has been impressive, Joel. I've, I've seen a couple practices, and the young guys that they had had at midterm have come in and done a nice job. Another guy I'd like to see is Trey McGuire. Mm. Let, let's see him uh, pick it up. He's always been good in the spring. Boy, if they can bring him along as a wide receiver. So you're going to see a guy like Alex Ross. You're going to see David Smith. As they have to establish that depth, and they've got to establish themselves within this program behind guys like Williams. One thing you're seeing also, you're seeing some good pace with the offense right now. Uh, good starts for the quarterback so far, and they're pacing it. Josh Heupel is picking up the pace to see, to, to give him extreme conditions for young quarterbacks to make them think fast to see what they can do. For me, it's the fact that he has not played significant time on the football field since 2009. That's a long time because he missed basically his entire senior season with an injury. So you're looking all the way back. That's a long time, Chuck, to not be on the field. So it's good to see him make a decision like he just did. Rolling out, it's not there. Tuck it rather than forcing it down the field. Here is Trevor Knight in at the quarterback spot. Again, we see the Sooners handing to Brennan Clay. What a great explosive year he had back for his senior campaign, taking it all the way down to the 27-yard line is Brennan Clay. Throw that ball, stick that thumb in your pocket. That's how I was always taught to, to follow through. And then, Chuck, you get that beautiful arc and trajectory, and that nose comes down over the top. From the 19-yard line this time, a first down and 10, and Kendall Thompson is back in at the quarterback spot. Sooners will get a lot of their young faces. We'll see Roy Finch a little bit today as you see the jitterbug get some activity. Not much there at the line of scrimmage. Bottled up well along the front. Jordan Phillips wears number 80, 6'6", 324. Chuck, you were mentioning him a moment ago, and right on cue, he makes a stop for you. It, it, it's a tough, those are tough shoes to fill. Tony was a great player. But, but Gabe does have experience. He has, he has all kinds of experience in the secondary, which is what you like. There's a lot of campuses where it's far away from everything. It, here, you, you have it real close, right across the street. They never have to use a car. On third down and one, Trevor Knight able to escape the pocket and pick up the first down. They got to spot him on that, and they give him just enough to pick up the first down. Trevor Knight continues this drive for the Sooner offense with a 10-2 lead. Cut back to the middle. David Smith gets engulfed as he crosses the 45. But other than D.J. Ward, there will be six others coming in this fall to compete for time on the defensive line, Chuck. A big infusion of talent along that front. Coach Montgomery right now, the D-line coach, just says he has about six guys he can rotate in there. But bringing in a 315-pound junior college offensive lineman, Quincy Russell, 6'4", 315, so he'll definitely battle for some time. Third down and seven. Again, Knight escapes the pocket, avoids the tackle of Eric Stryker, and they'll give him progress down to the 38-yard line. 
spring football coverage there the mic'd up features interviews with players and coaches it has been a valuable tool for Sooner fans this spring there's Roy Finch jitterbugging out near midfield and first down from just shy of midfield Blake Bell going to go up top this time for Deron Neal and a battle there Neal comes away with it and slides out of bounds down at the 10 yard line that's going to be a gain of 45 yards and a big first down for the offense personal foul penalty gives the offense the ball with the first and goal at the five yard line this is Finch sealed up initially Corey Nelson grabs him and gets some assistance there in the middle a couple of yards there for Roy Finch Finch again bounces off the initial hit still trying to charge forward but not much there for Roy Finch Out of the pocket goes Bell once again, trying to find somebody open, stays in bounds and fires a dart to Deron Neal for the touchdown. That was a great play by Blake, but you got to be careful a little bit on, on those plays. Those are plays you can, they could be trouble too. Yes, and I'm, I'm definitely ready for it to come to an end. Uh, talk about the combine, of course, you had a very impressive performance in the 40. I mean, how was that experience for you? Well, you're one of the guys that uh, they're looking to fill their spot on the wide receivers I mean who what guys are you looking to, to step up and have big seasons for this team Trevor Knight wearing a white jersey now technically playing for the defense for those keeping track of the score this is Brennan Clay back in the game as a flag flies and not much there for Brennan Clay Corey Nelson came and filled that hole who played some last year started the Baylor game when Gabe Eichert was injured a season ago there's a good throw and catch, and there's Sterling Shepard. Haven't gotten to mention his name, but what a great freshman year he had, and you expect more plays like that throughout his Sooner career, Joel. I just love how he attacked the interior of that defense immediately. I mean, he got to that spot for Trevor Knight. I mean, right on time, immediately attacking the linebacker core. Well, guess what? They played great defense in the Big 12 Conference. So that, I, I, can't, I can't wait for that game. Again, October 5th, right here, when the Horned Frogs come in to play the Sooners. That was Sam Grant, Redford, fr Redshirt freshman tight end on the reception. And there you see Knight escape the pocket. Boy, motor that was out fluid. to about the 33-yard line. It, it did look smooth. Did see, it just move, move out of the pocket. That's impressive, even in a blue jersey. Some numbers. Trevor Knight was four out of eight for 38 yards passing in that first half breaking a tackle at the line of scrimmage is David Smith We've seen David Smith get the bulk of the duties that's his 11th carry he's got over 40 yards on the afternoon they've been running the outside zone that's been their staple run and I and I wanted to see more inside running game and mm -hmm. you just saw it just just now with David Smith I think if they can get to that inside run in the shotgun, that will establish more uh, presence and physicality at the line of scrimmage. Trevor Knight had completed his first three passes on this drive. The best he has looked throwing the ball to this point. Looked like some movement up front. And Knight looking for Matwire again. Comes back to the football, pulls it in, and tries to muscle his way toward the pylon. And out of bounds at about the two, it appears. Brandon Young, the junior from Frisco, Texas, on the coverage again. Smart throw knowing that he had a free play. Defensive offsides. It happened just to his left. Might as well go up top, and he does for a completion. Offsides. Defense number 94. That penalty is declined. They've been good down there. They want to transfer that to the middle of the field, and I think that'll be a key to their success this year is getting that inside run game in the middle of the field or between the 20s. David Smith bulldozes his way right up the middle. No indication yet, and now we do see touchdown. So the offense gets in. No school in the country is deep enough to have talented guys not play well. And Trey Matwire is definitely talented enough. This is the reverse and Sterling Shepard. Love to see him get on the edge across the 30 and escorted out of bounds at about the 34-yard line by strong safety Quentin Hayes. They pulled a trick play out in the spring game on offense. I'll tell you what, <laughs> Mike Stoops and Josh Heupel are, are not going to dinner tonight. That's right. The key, the key factor for these defensive backs is getting lined up fast against these fast-paced offenses, and that's going to be key, and it puts those DBs in a bind. But uh, they see it so much now that they're getting used to it, and they're just, hey, line up when you can and, and let it fly. And in large part because of him, because they can get into a two-back look with him, they can get into a two-tight end look with him, they can get into a four-receiver set, and he never comes off the field. It, it's... 
he is one of the true great players in college football. I love watching him play just because of the hybrid nature with which he plays offense. A little faster at the collegiate level. You got to come back to those balls. <laughs> That's the truth. Yeah. By the way, that was Daniel Brooks who broke up that pass. He's playing both some running back and defensive back in the spring. 34, you'll see him. He's a redshirt freshman out of Port Lavaca, Texas. If you need it and you get into one of those games that can be a slugfest and you need some big bodies in there, he'll be able to provide that. Fourth down and one, and the offense goes for it, picks up the first down with Terrence Olds, the junior from Spencer, Oklahoma. I would think that would be a very short-sighted point of too. view because right. if you're not practicing how to be physical and be safe on the football field then you're not going to be able to do that when it comes time for the fall that's right there goes Kendall Thompson breaking all the way into the defensive end of the field to the 32 yard line that's 18 yards on the scamper by Kendall Thompson but uh, I think Blake Bell at this point in time has been the number one quarterback today it, it's hard for me. I, Kendall has made some plays with his feet during this possession. There's a nice throw to Matuire right here. But making a play with your feet in a blue jersey, to me, I don't know if it's real or not. Right. So it's hard to judge. It's hard to uh, to quantify, you know, whether that's a plus play or a minus play. Right. So for me, I'll, I'll agree with you. I think Blake Bell has been the one guy that has ran the offense the most, uh, you know, crisp, I guess you would say. Another catch for Trey Matuire. There's that good inside running game, Coach. Yeah, right up the middle. That's good push from the offensive line. Right. Terrence Olds once again. We've seen extended action for Terrence Olds in the spring game today. Back to their diamond formation here. They like that down inside the 10. First and goal from the 8. And again, it's Olds. There you go. Good push. Bulldozing really good down push. to about the 3. If you're always running outside zone, then they can really flow hard to the, to the, to the ball on the outside without checking their gap on the inside first so you need the equal amount of both I believe in the run game saw Aaron Franklin come up with a good stick there on Terrence Olds we get another look at that but Aaron Franklin's had a nice day that's his sure. seventh tackle of the afternoon and the ball comes, ball comes out up. defense recovers a good stand there so, you know, all in all, see, this is when Coach Stoops was like, all right, great drive and a goal line stand. There we go. There There's go. positives on both sides, <laughs> right? <laughs> Fumbled exchange. Knight bobbles it. It's picked up and taken into the end zone by Frank Shannon, a defensive score. And that's got to make Coach Stoops, Mike, even happier. Well, here, here's one of those situations. Here's one of those situations here, uh, Joel. They want to put Trevor Knight in a tough situation yeah. coming off the goal line to see what he can do. Uh, it obviously, didn't work out too well. No, and that snap was, snap. Uh, you know, the snap was perfect. Yeah. But that's, that's again, a new situation. And your awareness as a quarterback. Offense back out there with Blake Bell at the controls. He's thrown a touchdown pass to Deron Neal today. And that strike to the left sideline to Sam Grant, redshirt freshman tight end. That was D.J. Ward who actually made that last tackle, just cleared this week by the NCAA Clearinghouse, the freshman defensive end out of Lawton. And that's going to be the final play of the third period, another completion from Blake Bell to Sam Grant. And every pencil on those golf carts has an eraser. Absolutely. <laughs> There's Roy Finch electrifying the crowd, sprinting toward the end zone. He will take it to the house. And that's what Roy Finch can do for you. 51 yards on the pitch and catch. Roy Finch races for a score. Explosiveness with the football. Chuck, we talked about it earlier. When you're breaking in a quarterback, when you're an offense, just period, and you can get the football to a guy that can go to the house, that is what you want. That's what you want. So Blake yeah. Bell gets credit for his second touchdown pass of the afternoon. You've got something in your system that you just have to go execute. You know, what, what are we executing on third down? That's part of managing right. the system. Right. Even if it's a big completion and everyone could say, oh, he just made a play. Well, or is he just managing what they're executing? That, that's a great throw right there. Right, great throw. Back shoulder of Trey McTwire, who's having a huge afternoon. Dropped a pass a moment ago, but again, working on Brandon Young. They'll drop him out of bounds at the 31-yard line. That's a 42-yard gain from a Twyer who's over the 100-yard receiving mark today. Kept the ball outside, as you see right now. Great throw, back shoulder, Joel, as you say. 
and kept the ball outside instead of inside. Gave him a chance to play. That is a undefendable play. People ask me all over the country who are my favorite coaches to deal with or my, who, I, who do I respect the most. I come up with two guys, and it's Bill Snyder and Bob Stoops. Right. Cut from the same cloth. And, um, Bob coached with Bill. You right. know, and that's, that's where he cut his teeth, and that's where he learned how to become a head coach. Knight to the back of the end zone, completes the touchdown pass to Cottle. So those two hook up a couple of times on the drive and get him into the end zone one more time. What a great drive. Trevor is loosened up, throwing the ball well right now, Joel. That's a terrific throw right at the base Perfect. Mask. The decision I always wanted coming out of the spring game, Chad, is... You may not get the starting quarterback, but you have to try to whittle it down to two guys going into fall camp because you're not going to be able to get all three equal amount of repetitions. So I always wanted to get, okay, we don't want to name the starter. We want to keep them competing all the way through the summer and fall camp. I try to get a starter name by uh, at least 10 days before yep. the first game. I think one player they're, they're really counting on, that's Jordan Phillips. The big guy, got a very lot, a lot of athleticism, probably needs to crank his motor ups uh, to, to make that uh, more consistent player. But he's one of the players they're looking for in the defensive line to make an impact. Back up to you now. Thank you, Tony. We greatly appreciate it. Yet yeah. it's time for him to grow and take the next step and be a dominant factor in there. He has the size to do it and the athleticism. It just needs to come out. And again, we'll see if maybe Quincy Russell, the junior college transfer, makes an impact. Chuka Ndulue has played some at defensive tackle this spring as well. Man, I, I love I love the competitiveness of these quarterbacks. Yeah, they're competing today. They are, aren't they? They're competing. I mean, they're stepping it up in the second half. These guys want this job. And no. also, hey, I, I need to get those reps too. Right. I want those reps. I can't get behind anybody. Great elusive move there by Thompson. Tripped up down at the 30-yard line, finally. These are the situations coaches want to see, aren't they, Chuck? Exactly. Especially red zone situations, because as Joel will tell you, in the red zone, that's a nice play right there. Great throw, lob over the top. Nice and touch. caught for the touchdown by David Smith out of the backfield. Red zone happens faster. Everything happens faster for a quarterback the closer you get to the goal line. So those are the situations that are really what they want to great coaches want to grade on. This is a, a lack of space. You know, the defenders are all closer to your offensive players. There's a lack of space. The windows get smaller. Everything is smaller. And so a nice play. Finding a spot to throw with touch down the red zone is hard to do. That just shows me that Kendall Thompson has great instincts for the game. You know, to, to throw with that amount of touch for a touchdown pass. Nick Hodgson adds the point after the White officially now on top. He may emerge as the number one guy before it's all said and done. We'll pass along some quarterbacking numbers as Blake Bell takes the blitz and dumps it off to Roy Finch. Look out for him in the open space, and he avoids what would have been a huge hit from Gabe Lynn and squeezes yardage all the way out to the 38-yard line. Blake Bell now has thrown a couple of touchdown passes in this game, and he is 11 of 18 for 169 yards as he continues this drive with another dump off to Roy Finch, and he'll scoot out of bounds at the 42 with a gain of five. You have two plays here now. You don't need to get all of it back with a big throw. Don't take the sack. And he did get <laughs> sacked, and good pressure by Geno Grisham. Geno Grisham played tight end a year ago, is a defensive end. He's back on the defensive side of the ball this year, and he can be a difference maker. One final crack on third down and 26 for the offense. We'll see if for fourth down and 26, we'll see if they get a first down or turn it back over. Bell hit as he throws. A floating pass that is caught for the first down by Derek Woods. Now they're just having fun. Now that's just oh, yeah. sandlot ball right there. Throw it up. <laughs> hey, alley -oop. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Fourth down and three. They brought a blitz. Good pressure Ooh, coming off the edge. They did. Bell gets rid of Mike it. Mike Eric gets his revenge, <laughs> Coach. <laughs> Little re yeah, they are not going out to dinner. <laughs> no, they're not. <laughs> no dinner because between Josh and Mike tonight. There's that blitz, the pressure from the left side. <laughs> Eric Stryker with the hit on Blake Bell to force the incompletion on the final oh, play of the spring game. The white team wins it 28-24, to 24 and they will...
huddle up in the middle of the field around head coach Bob Stoops. What'd you think? Final thoughts here, Chuck, on the three quarterbacks today. Boy, they, they have a race now. <laughs> it's a competitive race right now. It's going to be a tough decision to get it down to two if they do get it down to two going into fall. I I couldn't even break two out of the pack today, yeah. and that's I think that's the both the good, great part about seeing them all compete and compete at a high level, and also the the maddening part for a coach is now you're going into fall camp, and you it's going to be a tough hierarchy to to slate out there. All three of them showed signs today, and it looks like the Sooners got out of this with no significant injuries and a 28-24 win for the white team. What does that Sooner mean? Sooner fans, I don't know. Somebody gets steak after the game, and the other side <laughs> has to eat chicken, I suppose. Right. Sooner fans, check out Soonersports.tv for on-demand coverage of all your favorite Sooner sports. Log on now to access over 1,000 hours of exclusive Oklahoma Sooners coverage brought to you by the OU Athletic Department. That's Soonersports.tv. I want to thank Jessica Cudi, Tony Casillas, and J.D. Runnels down on the sidelines. For my partners up here, Chuck Long and Joel Klatt, I'm Chad McKee. It was a great spring. Sooners will have one more practice, and they'll do it all over again come the fall, and we'll see who emerges sometime in August as a starting quarterback at the University of Oklahoma. We also want to thank our crew. We had three different setups today at the Big Boomer Barbecue, down on the field and up here in the booth. Guys, you make this all possible for us. I'm Chad McKee for the final time. We'll talk to you next time, Sooner Nation.